Okay, so again, here's the parts. Um, this is done with wire brush, wire wheels. Um, I used a right angle and um, a small, like, 5 amp corded drill with a bunch of wire wheels. And I also used a drum wall at the very end to get in a little, a few little spots. Um, again, ideally, you could sandblast these. Um, it would be easier. It might not be cheaper, but save time. This took me four and a half hours. Um, and that little wire wheel to the foot there between my shoe and my sock. So, of course, hard work. I'm going to be bleeding a little bit. Um, so it's ready, ready to go here. So you should have your part should be totally silver when it's clean and ready to go. I mean, I wouldn't paint these without getting them super clean first. Um, if you want it to last at all. I mean, even in this best case, if I was daily driving it, I still wouldn't expect it to last very long. Um, but these are um, pretty much ready to go. I'm going to clean them one more time with uh, acetone. And then uh, I'll be ready to go with the uh, G2. If you are using hand tools with wire brushes, it is um, a little bit difficult to sort of hold the part while you're working on it. Um, I tried using one of our vices, but it's just a pain in the ass to take time and reposition the thing in a vice every 25 seconds. So I ended up holding it in my hand, holding it in my feet. That's how I got that uh, cut on my ankle. Um, so it's a lot of wear and tear in your hands and, and stuff. Now I, I do have a small drill press and I tried that thinking if I had the um, brush steady and just moved the part, but that didn't work too well either. It was just hard to position the part and uh, the drill press that I have it was a little bit low on torque. So the high RPM sort of hand tool was was the best uh, the best case. And one other thing when you're done doing this, I would um, get to painting them right away carbon steel this it'll rust it'll start to rusting overnight i mean literally if you just let it sit too long you start to get a little film you start to get surface rust um and stuff like that and as i mentioned before i have always found it's better to use mechanical means sandblasting or wire brushing to remove all that rust um, and dirt okay i'm mixing the paint i'm mixing half and half in here uh, just in case I make some sort of mistake or can't finish it in one day. And I also wanted to save some of this to use on some tiny like rust spots on other areas of the car. So it's kind of like an epoxy. You got uh, your base and your epoxy or hardener or whatever you want to call it. And, um, you know, you want to let it sit for five minutes for the air bubbles to escape. You're going to stir it again. Um, and then you're going to start painting. And uh, this says you have, um, you've got a few hours. So that's good. It's not going to harden right away. Okay, so here we are the next day, and we're able to do three coats on each part. They're starting to get hard. Still feels a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit sticky. Um, I have a little bit, tiny bit left over to um, fix any small areas we might need to, and also there's a couple small corners on my engine block that I was going to seal, clean up and seal from rust with the remaining stuff. So the uh, caliper paint, especially the, the brush on G2, is ideal for a textured rotor. It sort of self-levels um, to a certain degree, but you could still see here, like, if you have smooth machined or smooth cast rotors with no texture, you'll still get sort of a a brush mark. Now you can see here I actually did everything except the mating surfaces, the piston. Um, I even did where the, the surface is made here. Now you may or may not want to do that depending on your opinion. Um, but uh, I covered it just to, to help block rust from the entire thing, the entire exposed surface. And it's an epoxy so it dries hard. But uh, if you're doing this while it's on your car, obviously, you're not even going to get under here or here. You're basically going to get the around here and the outside surface and the side surface that's visible. Okay, so here we are. Three coats of the G2 Black. 
It's a high gloss finish, works really well on a textured caliper like the E36 M3. Kind of coats pretty well over it, dries hard. This is the little extra I left in the bottom of the dish here and you can see it's about 16 hours later and you can see my fingernail I can s sort of press it a bit but it's pretty hard already and it just doesn't want to even come off of, of this so it's a nice hard shell perfect for textured rotors if you've got smooth cast rotors um, you can see on the machined area of the rotor here which I did paint on these uh, you can see brush marks there it sort of starts to coat a bit like an old school oil paint but it um, still leaves marks, so ideally you would want to spray it on a smooth caliper. It might look fine, but um, you might want to spray it. But as far as these stock ones, it's it's perfect. So next we have the testers enamels for the M. Um, we've got a dark red, a red. This dark blue here is a sea blue. This is dark blue. This is light blue. This is sky blue, white, and then a thinner. So we'll use the white for the M. We're gonna mix these two for um, one of the, the slashes. Or probably, probably we'll mix these two or some combination of these two for the first blue, and then some combination of these two for the second striped light blue. And, uh, and, and that'll be it. So let's, let's see how it goes. Okay, so here's the first one. Four or five coats with the airbrush actually came out really good, way better than with the brush. I'm not sure how durable the finish will be. We'll find out. Okay, so here we are about to do the first stripe, masked off, cleaned, where I decided on brilliant red. It's not a mixture. It's just straight up this one here. And uh, here we go. Okay, so here are the final colors for the stripes. For the red, I used the Brilliant Red. I did not mix in any other reds. There's a dark red. I did not end up using it, and it came out great. Um, for the blues, I used Sea Blue, uh, Dark Blue, and Sky Blue. I did not use the Light Blue, although Light Blue and Sky Blue almost seem identical to me. Would have been just as easy. So for the dark blue, I used like, I'd say 50% of this one, the sea blue, 40% of the dark blue, and 10% of the sky blue, something along those lines. Now, there's no um, color code or color spec per se for the M logos or whatever. It changes all the time with BMW, and especially on the older cars, you know, the red is like orange. I hate it, but it's like almost like an orange and uh, if you look at all the different BMW cars and parts and stuff it like changes all the time but anyway this was my desire most desirable kind of look um, and then for the light blue it's like uh, I'm gonna say 80% 80 to 90% sky blue and then 5% of each of these something along those lines just to give it a little bit more of that tint. You could see here it's close, but this is a little washed out. This has a little bit of that darker pigment like the BMW logo usually has. 